Andy here from Gen Connect, here with the authors of Spreadable Media, Reading in a Participatory Culture. Welcome Sam Ford, Henry Jenkins, and Joshua Green. Gentlemen, I am so lucky to be seated with three very smart gentlemen. Thank you for joining me today. Thanks for having us. So your book, Spreadable Media in a Participatory Culture, let's break that apart a little bit. What does the title of the book mean? Sure. So uh, I'll speak first to the Spreadable Media uh, part of the equation. Uh, one of our focuses uh, is on understanding how content circulates uh, in a digital world where often the audience as a whole, uh, citizens as a whole, have a greater uh, agency in determining how content spreads. So it's not just the distribution mechanisms of the companies that send stuff out. In the old broadcast model, it was often the companies shipping things to audiences. And now you're as likely to read a news story or find out about a, a clip of video content from one another as you are to see it from the website or on the television or in an, an ad placement in a newspaper that the company intended. So what, what does that mean and, and, and really tracking how things spread. Uh, the Reading in a Participatory Culture project is one that, that Henry's been working on uh, and I thought he might speak to that as well. Yeah, so this uh, go alongside the book that's really targeting marketers and media producers is a book for teachers that's really about developing the skills and competencies young people need to make sense of a world where information is passing through their inbox and they're less certain about the sources of that information. Where they are, you know, we found MacArthur Study Foundation uh, survey recently found 85% of young people need more help uh, discerning the quality of information they receive online. And this book is one of one of the many efforts MacArthur has made to get more help teachers get up to speed on what they need to do to train that generation. And what we were trying to do with, with Spreadable Media um, was to articulate the ways and explore the ways in which culture moves through interconnected society now, and also the way that we use those cultural artifacts to make meaning. So you know, one of the core tenets of the book is that you know, content doesn't just move around of its own accord. You know, that people share content in order to say something about themselves, to make sense of the world around them, um, to create some sort of meaning. And so, so the subtitle for the, for the Spreadable Media book is that it's about the way that culture and meaning are produced in, in a networked economy. So at the heart of the book is a critique of the idea of viral media. So automatically now when we talk about content that sprouts across the web, the language of viral gets used. We heard it countless times here at South by Southwest. We think it's a wrong model, that viral media implies a world where you design a killer virus and you infect the human host and they unknowingly carry it back to the village and infect their friends and family. And it strips aside the notion of human agency. Whereas we, most of us, in the course of a day, get hundreds of pieces of information that pass, and media that pass through our inbox, how do we decide which ones we pass on to the world, through which channel, in which context, within which conversation, through which media? There's a lot of active choices going on there. And as long as we mystify it by talking about viral, we either are passively saying, don't know what happened, it just went viral, or we're sort of treating it as an occult science. And we really think it's, a, it's about culture, it's about society, it's about choices people are making within a culture where all of us have greater control over the means of cultural production and circulation than ever before. So that's participatory culture. It's when having other people share that medium, share that story, share that video. That's how something goes viral. It's not the creator who's spreading it to the masses. It's the masses who are spreading it among one another and among their, their networks. One of the issues we've seen uh, traditionally is that participation uh, would get too narrowly defined. So uh, as a lot of people talked about participation early on, getting audiences to participate, is these are very overt forms of producing content in return. So writing a blog or producing a video, those sorts of things. One of the things the Spreadable Media Project seeks to describe is all of these actions that may seem a little bit more invisible, that aren't quite as uh, heavy on the production side, but that are very much part of participating. <laughs> participating in sharing things, participating in providing context around things. And audiences are engaged in these behaviors in ways that are very mundane. Mm. A lot of people wouldn't see themselves as content creators. A lot of people who have a Facebook page or a Twitter account don't see themselves as producers. 
but they're doing these acts of circulation, participating in these sorts of, of, of information flows on a daily basis. And for us, the mundaneness of that is actually something that is maybe more transformational than a lot of production practices because it's something that's widespread and isn't just happening among a select audience. So the word spreadable sounds a bit like peanut butter or jelly, but we meant it as a contrast to the word sticky. For a long time, the web was the web design was sticky design, suck people in like a roach motel and see how if you can hold them and prevent them from leaving. We're arguing now that value is created by spreading and that we're trying to tell companies that lock down their content and don't auth don't allow unauthorized users to take it and do what they want with it, that if it doesn't spread, it's dead. If it's cut out of circulation, it doesn't create value or meaning in a network society. And we're making an argument that it's important to shift away from logics that focus on distribution, that think about centralized points of production and dissemination and then broad sources, swathes of audience who might consume things, and then instead we need to look at the way that content moves independent of large channels, in tandem with large channels, in multiple streams at the same time, between unanticipated connections. You know, to Sam's point, a lot of that mundane activity is incredibly significant. It fuels, you know, the revenues of very large media companies. But if you just forward an email or like something on Facebook, that's an incredibly easy activity to do. So you as a person may not be thinking about how you're contributing value. And the value that you are en masse contributing may not be returned to you as an individual. So part of what we try and unpack are what are the politics of a space where getting people to share content is as valuable as broadcasting it on television. So what can we say to people right now to get them to share this interview? Should we offer them a prize? I, share, <laughs> share this interview near and far with all of your friends? Well, part of it is thinking about the motivation your audience has to pass something along. A lot of times companies are thinking about their own business goals for getting people to participate in things and for We'll get you one more client if you could share this video. <laughs> I, would, I, would, I would suggest that they, that, that they watch this video and that they think about who it could be of most value to and they send it to that person. Because then that act of sharing is actually, you know, they're doing someone else a favor, right? They're increasing someone's knowledge. And those sorts of activities, not necessarily just incentivization through contests, is what actually fuels the movement of material around the internet. Spreadable media, media is a fantastic book. You need to share it. You need to tell your friends about it. And um, for more videos, you could also check out genconnect.com.